next to him, no mother, no father, no daughter, no son, no relative gods, no many gods, only God, God alone. That's what God has always said. And that's what Jesus said. The greatest commandment is the first of the commandments. Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. And thou shalt have no other gods along with him. And thou shalt not worship anything in the heavens or the earth, or any graven images in the heavens and the earth, or in the sea below. Now, this is what the Quran sets forward as the statement of God. So, let's set your friend aside and his alleged knowledge of the Arabic language or the Quran and let's set aside your familiarity with him and your obvious unfamiliarity with the Quran. No, the Almighty has never said that he has a son or family or daughter and nor did Jesus Christ say, I am God, worship me, or I am the son of God in the sense that Jesus is the exclusive son. Yes, in the Bible, Abraham was called God's son. Isaiah was called God's son. David was called God's son. In fact, we were all as good godly people called the sons and daughters of God, but that is only figuratively. Figuratively. Doesn't mean that God is a father penetrating a woman, giving forward seed, and having a son. That's a pagan belief. That's an idolatrous belief. That was the belief of the Romans, and that's why the church adopted that. But no one ever said that, no other prophet ever said that. And blessed be Jesus Christ, and free is he of that kind of blasphemy. So, my answer to you. And to your friend who claims that he knows the Quran, is that that could not be so. But we can talk about that a little bit more if you like, okay? The question How is Islam or Muhammad an extension of Christianity? The prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, answered that himself. He said, I am to the other prophets what the cornerstone is to a building when it is, when it is completed. What is the cornerstone to a building when it is completed? It is set in place to signify the completion, the perfection of that building, and that building is prepared for occupation. The messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what was he to the other prophets? He was the final link in the chain that completed the set of pearls of prophethood. So the prophethood began with the first man and the first prophet, Adam. So all those prophets came forward from Almighty God, calling the people towards God, calling the people towards good actions, coming to the people in their time, in their language, ordering the people in the same way, oh my people. Obey Almighty God and worship only Almighty God and do good actions. That's what Abraham said. That's what Noah said. That's what Moses said. That's what David said. That's what Solomon said. That's what John the Baptist said. That's what Jesus Christ said. That's what Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, said. And also, Jesus Christ prophesied Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. And Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he confirmed Jesus Christ. The Quran confirms the life of all those prophets and all their messages and in fact in the Quran there's a chapter which is called Mary dedicated to the mother of Jesus Christ confirming for us Muslims the birth of Jesus Christ without a father confirming for us the miracles of Jesus Christ by the power given to him by Almighty God, confirming that Jesus Christ was in fact the Messiah and that he was the word of Almighty God, that God put words in his mouth and God gave him power, but Jesus never said, I am God, worship me. So our position is that we love Jesus maybe more than those who claim to worship him because we know Jesus as a man as a prophet, as a messenger of God. It's not my conscience, 
It's that I want to learn more and have more knowledge. So I do not make any mistakes after I revert. Should I wait or revert now? Now! <laughs> no, honestly, brothers and sisters, anything that is good for your life, anything that is good for your life, <coughs> critical for your life, don't procrastinate. Don't take the luxury of thinking that there will be tomorrow. Babies die, young people die, pretty people die, ugly people die. Don't take the luxury of changing your heart. If you thought that you were headed north and you had went a hundred miles and you found out that you were headed south, would you go a couple more miles? No, you wouldn't. Because you already know that even when you turn around right there, you're already 200 miles out of the way. The 100 miles you went wrong and the 100 miles coming back. Is it right? And if I had some money for you, if it was announced to you that you had won a prize and you were asked, would you like to have that prize now or, or later on? What would you say? If you're smart, you'll say right now. So my answer to you, in all honesty and sincerity, is that if you want to change your heart, and you want to change your mind, and you want to change your orientation, and you want to come back to your natural disposition of serving the Creator, do it now. And when I say do it now, you don't have to come up here in front of the people. That's not necessary. But before we leave this place tonight, we will facilitate that for you, inshallah. Put that sheet right there. Another question. It says, I am a Christian lady sitting in the audience and I'm interested in becoming a Muslim, but I'm still not sure. Should I become a Muslim? What advice would you ha give me? I say that if you are a lady loving Jesus Christ, and you already have the inclination to be a Muslim, I understand the doubts. Because even if I went swimming, and the water was very beautiful, I would still put my toe, you know what I mean, kind of like in test of water. It's always advised that before you get up on the 20 foot high diving board, before you bounce up in the air and look down and see there's no water in the pool, <laughs> make sure where you're diving. So that Christian lady, I would say this to you, before you leave here tonight, we also will sit with you to answer some things that will clear up and open up the way to make it easy for you to embrace the values that you are inclined to. Another question says, why does Allah refer to himself as we rather than them or me or, or I can't see the word Anyway, what I understand from this is that the person wants to know that if God is one, if Allah is one, why does he refer to himself in the Quran as we? Well, let me give you this here very clear reference. In the Arabic language, there is something called ismu adham. Ismu adham. It means a very powerful name. There's nothing like it in English. So when Allah says in the Quran, Nahnu, it doesn't mean here plurality. It's a way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expressing himself in his power, in his majesty, with his attributes, in such a way that it is conclusive that there's no one other than him. It's called Ismu Adam. It doesn't mean we. 
it doesn't mean plurality it's like the sovereign of a country speaking about his royalty his power and he says and we have ordained the king really means he has ordained he's using we as a way of adding power to his speech so the creator in speaking to us in the Arabic language uses this ismu adam to add power to his presence when he speaks to us but it doesn't mean we or us in the sense of the English language of plurality of course those of you who don't speak Arabic you'll have to trust me for that interpretation another question says that Moses Jesus and Muhammad are messengers of Allah then why Jewish can't still follow Moses or Christians can't follow Jesus well the fact that Moses Jesus and Muhammad are messengers of Allah has nothing to do with the inability of those who supposed to follow their paths not to do so properly the fact that you or I don't represent good citizenship doesn't alter and doesn't necessarily take away from and doesn't disengage or disqualify the authenticity of this government the message the scripture the system of life that Moses Jesus and Muhammad peace and blessing be upon all of them that they represented was from the Creator the Most High now those Muslims or those people of the Jewish faith or those Christians that fail to personify that faith and are unable to respect one another this itself is not an aspersion upon that faith and no conflict upon that faith the aspersion or the conflict is upon those who make the claim of following that faith the question when we are born is our life set out as everything in faith I don't quite quite understand the question but I'll think that what I understand is that the person wants to know is that when we're born is matters of faith already determined for us we have something in Arabic called fitra fitra say that say fitra fitra in Arabic the word fitra means natural disposition it means that when a child is born that child has a natural disposition it is already oriented to feel the warmth of the mother's body it is already oriented to look for the nipple of the mother's breast it is already oriented to submit it is already oriented to depend it is innocent it is born into the world with a natural disposition of submission and dependence that is the way God has created that child all of us said the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he says that all of us were born with a natural disposition to surrender and submit ourselves towards our Creator no 